Hello and welcome to another scrapbooking process video. This page is the first of two pages scrapped together and meant to be viewed consecutively. These are transparent layouts with a printed vellum base, so a bit different, and I encourage you to view them in order starting with this one, Capture Every Moment, and then the second one which is called Lovebirds, which I will link in a card in the top right hand corner of this video. Now I am trying to scrapbook a couple of photos from my sister's wedding and at this point I think that I want these two photos of her. I like these two because they're both horizontal and I just love them. They're just beautiful photos and at this point I'm not too sure what I'm doing so I just selected these but I'm going to change my mind and I'm going to in include some of my so photo selection process here just so that you can see why I'm changing my mind. Now over on my Patreon this month I have selected a sketch from Creative Scrappers and I've also selected two different color schemes and I'm doing a bit of a challenge with a bit of a prize for my tiaras over on Patreon and so I thought I would play along with that challenge and create a couple of layouts myself using that that color scheme those two color schemes and this sketch. So this is going to be the first of two pages, as I mentioned at the beginning, I am using this beautiful printed vellum from Stampin' Up! And I'm just going to show it to you very quickly because it's gorgeous. It has this really pretty leaf pattern. It has this polka dot pattern and it also has this striped pattern. And there are two of each sheet in this collection. And it's called Vellum Basics 12 by 12 Specialty Designer Series Paper. And it's a current product, at least as of the 2021-2022 catalog, which is about to uh, be replaced. So I'm not sure how much longer you'll be able to get it. So act fast if you want this vellum because it's gorgeous. So as you can see, I am deciding that this layout, this photo will go well with that layout because it has plenty of green in it already. So I, so I felt okay with a less colorful color scheme, whereas the other photo is mostly browns and sepia kind of colors. And so I thought that using more colorful paper might make that project look a little bit less drab. I'm going to use circle dies for the majority of my circles. I will have to pull out my circle cutter at some point, but as you can see, there are a lot of circles on this sketch. I specifically chose this sketch because it had circles because last month I noticed as I was putting away my layouts that a lot of them were rectangles and stripes of uh, vertical strips of pattern paper. So I thought I'd mix it up a little bit with this sketch. And oftentimes I use a sketch as a jumping off point, but in this particular case, I'm going to follow this sketch exactly. And so you will get to see how that works out. Because I'm scrapbooking on vellum and it's pretty delicate and I don't want to get it messed up and I want to, um, so I don't want it to be on my background while I'm putting it aside just to keep it nice and, and crisp. And so I'm just using that piece of white patterned paper, not white pattern paper, the piece of white cardstock just to hold my space. I do want to use these letter stickers. And what I like about them is that they have this greeny blue foam behind them and I feel like I might be able to use that to my advantage like use them uh, double-sided because this is vellum and I'm going to be scrapbooking two sides of the same page here uh, in my scrapbook. So I just left this break in just to let you know that at this point I decide to print up different photos because I felt like I wanted to use XOXO as my letter stickers and those work the same in reverse. So that will be the part of this page that will be on both pages will be those letter stickers that say XOXO on one side, they will be wood veneer kind of colored. And the other side, you'll be able to see the blue foam underneath. And I think that that's going to look kind of cool. So it'll say XOXO on one side and OXOXO on the other side. But 
in order to do that, I thought that I would prefer to have photos of the bride and groom together and preferably photos of them kissing to kind of make the XOXO be more appropriate. So I have plenty of these photos to scrap and I will eventually get around to all of them. So this is an example of how I'm using my design ideas to inform my photo selection instead of the opposite, which is usually how I work. I usually have a photo in mind and then I I choose things from, th I, I choose products from there. So as you can see, I'm just showing that the back side of these are that same blue that shows up in my color scheme. So that's what I want to, to do there. I am, by the way, using Sarah Renee Clark's color palettes and I have her color cubes as well. And so I, uh, I noticed that a lot of the photos of them kissing are actually vertical photos. So those are the ones I'm going to print up and well, I've already printed up a whole selection of them, but the ones I'm going to choose to scrapbook are these vertical ones because they will fit with the sketch as well. The sketch uses a vertical photo. So I'm just having a look at my largest die here and seeing if that's going to be big enough for the circle. I'm I'm, I am really following this sketch quite closely, and so I'm not entirely sure that that is going to be big enough, but I'm going to start by just choosing some, some papers here. So this is the color scheme that I want to use for this one. It, it has a, a pretty dark green, and so I'm going to pick this paper to represent that green. <clears throat> and... I love this paper, so I think I'll pick that. I'm just gonna flip through all of them quickly. I have, the, I'm using the Gingham Garden collection from Crate Paper for almost all of this page. I will let you know when I draw in products that are not part of that collection, but generally speaking, if I don't mention what it's called, then it is from the Garden, the Gingham Garden collection from Crate Paper. So as you can see, I have the paper pad, not the paper collection. I usually prefer having the paper collection, which has double-sided paper. Uh, with the paper pad, it's single-sided, which, you know, there are pros and cons to both of those. And I'm just basically choosing papers from my color scheme here. I'll ha I will admit that I chose these color schemes specifically knowing that I had plenty of gingham garden in my collection, but I knew in, in my stash, but I knew that some of my patron members who might be scrapping along with me with my challenge might not have that collection. So I chose the color schemes so that they could use these to guide them if they're scrapping from their stash and they don't happen to have this collection. They could choose just pattern papers that go with these colors and uh, still meet the challenge. And there's a prize this month. There isn't usually a prize, so. And I don't necessarily do a challenge every single month, but I, I try to. So as you can see, I'm just choosing which patterns I'm going to use with which circles. And because this is a large pattern, in order to see it, I want to use my biggest circle on it. And so I'm just using a bit of washi tape here to stick the die down in place. I chose which swatch of butterflies I want to show up in the page. And I'm just gonna trim that down so that it'll fit through my die cut machine. I'm using my Big Shot today. And I'm just moving some things around in the background there and so here I am, I'm just going to show you how I push this through. I like to share my whole process, so I do cut to my die cut machine whenever I use it so that you can see that going through. It's very satisfying to cut your dies like that. And uh, I love a manual die cut machine. So there's my main circle and I'm feeling like it's not quite big enough, but don't forget, I do need to mat that with the green. I've decided I'm going to use that dark green. It's not that dark, but uh, the green, it looks like a solid, but it has leaves on it. Uh, I'm going to use that to, to mat all of my circles. See how each circle has a little mat on it? And so I'm going to use the green paper for that. So there will be various different patterned papers on the 
top level of circle and then that green will be consistent among all of the backgrounds of the circles. And when you're using a sketch, you do not have to follow it exactly the way that I'm doing here. In fact, I almost never do this, but uh, it just felt like this was a bit of a challenging layout for me because I am scrapping on vellum. And so I have to be thinking about both pages at the same time. So how is this going to look from the back? So following the sketch just allows me to uh, remove one element of problem solving off of my plate for today because this is going to be a tricky one and I don't usually scrapbook two full layouts at one setting so that's all the more reason to make this as easy on myself as I can. <laughs> Following a sketch makes it uh, satisfying but a little bit easier than not using a sketch or not following it. Because Christine Davidson, who designs these sketches from Creative Scrappers, uh, she, she puts all of the hard work in for me and then I get to just copy what she's figured out already as far as proportions and design elements and stuff. So that makes it really easy. So I am going to run these through. I don't really need tape because it doesn't really matter where on the paper these go. It doesn't matter if they shift a little bit. So I have a background for that and a background for that. I'm going to have to use my circle cutter to cut this bigger mat. Circle mat. So this is my curvy cutter. It's from EK Success and I really love this curvy cutter. It's, uh, it took me a while to find a circle cutter that had really good reviews. This is my first circle cutter I ever bought. It was, I bought it years and years and years ago, but I did a lot of research before I bought it because there were several options and circle cutters were kind of known at the time to be challenging and to not work very well. So I did a lot of research before picking this one and it works really, really well as long as you use it with a, with a glass cutting mat. So the people who seem to have trouble with this cutter are those who don't have a glass cutting mat so it's worth the extra investment it does not come with a cu cutting mat but as you can see I have my old slice cutting mat here and uh, it works perfectly <clears throat> so I'm just the, this this cutter has a couple of different ways that you can size your circles so I'm just getting that figured out and then once I have it set you just basically, I want to make sure that the template doesn't move. So that's why I stood up and put my weight on the template. But the cutter itself, you don't have to press very hard. It's spring mounted. And so you just put a bit of pressure on it and circle it around. And it's, it's really easy to use, actually. You just want to make sure that your template doesn't shift or move while you're cutting. Or else, obviously, you'll have a jagged circle instead of a, a nice smooth one. <clears throat> So I'm picking out a bunch of different brown markers or pens. I have these, these are Sarasa clips and they are 05 point and they're by Zebra and they're just a ballpoint pen. But I like them because they are brown and I don't like various shades of brown and uh, kind of warm colors. And I thought about using my Zig Writers and I was just showing the Zig Writers for my patrons who I, 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 I post the real time versions of all of these process videos over on Patreon. So that's why I'm kind of showing things and talking about things that won't actually make it into the process video here. But I was just showing those Zig Writers because I do really like those too, but mine are both running out. So I'm not going to use them on this project or they will, they won't last the whole project. They're a little streaky. So this uh, this uh, Sarasa clip pen works really well. It's brand new, so it's got plenty of juice in it. And I'm just circling, I'm double circling. And usually I will say, keep your wrist straight and move your whole arm. But in this case, because I'm doing a curve, I have to kind of move my wrist a little bit more. And so I'm just taking it in very small arcs, as you can see, and I'm just picking up where I left off, kind of trying to put the pen in exactly the same spot that I, that I lifted so that I can have a continuous circle. And my tips for outlining is just try not to overthink it. Just 
jump in and outline. And you'll get more and more confident the more you do it. <clears throat> so as you can see, all of those papers now have outlines around them. I'm using my Scotch ATG today, which I use, it used to be my main tape runner, but I've been using my Tombow tape runner, but today I decided to use this one. And uh, so I'm just going to be pretty much following that sketch. I thought for a minute here about, well, more than a minute, about positioning that middle sized circle so that the lines are diagonal, but I'm going to move that because I'm going to use that for journaling and I'll want the, the lines to be horizontal. So notice how this color scheme has a real reddish brown in it. I'm going over to my stash and I didn't share my camera view. Sometimes I show myself going over to my stash, but I didn't today. Uh, but I'm heading over to my Calyx unit and grabbing some brown cardstock. I have some Stampin' Up! Chocolate Chip, which is an older color. They don't sell that one anymore. And I also have this, um, this reddish burgundy kind of a color, which technically the color, the, the color palette is more of that reddish color, but I liked this brown better. So I'm going to adapt my color scheme to include this brown instead. It, it is a, a bit of a reddish. It's definitely a warm brown. And I'm just going to place the photo pretty much exactly the same way that it's placed in the sketch. And I'm just talking about how there's a lot of negative space in this photo. And uh, I thought about trimming down the photo to make it less tall, but the photographer included that negative space at the top of the photo. And I believe that her thought process was probably to emphasize the fact that they're in a, a tight tunnel with a low ceiling. And so if I cut that out, you, you kind of don't see the same atmosphere that this photo would otherwise have. So I'm going to leave it in, in place. Typically when I'm scrapping a photo that a photographer has taken, I try to leave it intact and not trim it down or change it because that's part of a photographer's art is, is that they, they frame photos in a certain way. And so I don't, I don't like to change that. I, I will if I really have a good reason to, but I'd prefer to leave their art the way that they intended it to be. And uh, so as you can see, I went into my brown scraps and grabbed a piece of weathered wood grain because it kind of fits with all of those barrels that are in the photo. And it also works with my color scheme quite nicely. So I trimmed that down to almost 12 inches wide because that's how wide the banner is in in the sketch. So I'm, bit, I'm being pretty precise here. I'm not always this precise. I usually just eyeball it, but I basically measured the halfway point and drew a line up about, I think it's one inch. And uh, I'm just cutting that. Even using the measurements, it's not perfect and it really doesn't have to be perfect. It's also, I don't think I cut it all that straight. At some point, I didn't cut it straight, whether it was the first time or this time. It, this banner is not 100% straight, but that's okay. It will be the same on both sides because it is what it is. And I'll show you how I'm going to make sure that it's exactly the same on both sides <clears throat> in a few minutes. So I'm just having a look through this sticker set. This is from... This is from the uh, Gingham Garden Collection. It's just the sticker book. There's 412 stickers in there. And I grabbed my rub-ons thinking that I might use these 49 and Market rub-ons on that negative space on the photo. But I can't really find anything. I like the idea of using a rub-on here. I was gonna put maybe just a butterfly up in the top corner but I couldn't really find anything that I liked enough to put there. And I do like this sticker right here. And it's a clear sticker, so I think it's perfect for just putting it subtly up in the corner here. It just puts a little bit more decor on that negative space without taking away from the fact that that space is there. So it's, it's roof from the, from the little room that they're in. 
Now I'm placing this so that their faces are lining up in that in the center of that banner that runs the length of the page because that's where your eye is going to gravitate to and so I want their faces to be part of your line of vision when your eye travels around the page I want it to take in their faces as they're kissing. Here I'm changing this to horizontal. I'm going to put some journaling on it so it's going to be a lot easier to journal on horizontal lines than on, than on diagonal lines. And so while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and mat the other photo because I think I might use some of this paper elsewhere in the project. It turns out I'm not, but I don't know this at this point. So I thought, let's just mat this other photo while I have a piece of it already cut to the right width. And that way that is done for page two when I go in. So there is a second process video that I'll encourage you to check out as well. So now I'm just checking to see how these letters are going to look when they're backwards. So it's a little bit tricky putting them sticky side up like this, but I just wanted to know how they look. And, and I do like them, they're, go they're gonna look good. So that idea will, will hold. <clears throat> I'm still not 100% committed to it at this point in the process, but I'm thinking, yeah, that's my initial idea is, is probably going to pan out. I'd love to use one of these titles for the title of this one, of this layout. This layout is going to be more plain and simple uh, than the layout on the other side. And so the, the other side is going to have a lot of embellishments. I don't know that at this point, but I'll give you a little spoiler alert that the other side is going to have a lot more going on. And this side is going to be pretty clean and simple, which I like my scrapbook to have a variety of layouts, some quite layered and cluttered and lots going on and others more kind of plain and simple. So I have put down the word capture and I would love to have a little subtitle that either I spell out with little tile letters or ideally I'd like to find a little letter, uh, a little phrase sticker. So I found this one that says every moment and I'm going to place it right there. I'm just going to scooch my title, the word capture down a little tiny bit just so that the, the phrase every moment looks a little bit more nestled in by the descender of the P there. And so the title becomes Capture Every Moment. I just use my white, pe my white gel pen to cover a little brown mark on the word capture. I'm thinking about doing some journaling here, but I'm not quite ready because I don't know what I want to say. So I'll just leave that for now. And I love these little puffy stickers from the collection. And so I'm just going to place them scattered around this banner just to break up the wood grain monotony a little bit because I know that this page is going to, I, I think I'm starting to get a sense that this page is otherwise going to be pretty clean and simple and I'm not going to be able to do any splattering or anything like that. I mean, I could, but I'm deciding that I'm not going to do that because I'd have to make sure that it looks good from both sides and I don't want to have to figure that out. So it's occurring to me that this banner that I cut by hand or, or, you know, it's, I'm gonna need another version of it for the other side. And I want it to be exactly the same shape. So I just traced it and I traced it on the back side of this paper, so that it will be the right shape on the opposite side. So I'm just cutting it out by hand. And There it is, and I've lost track of which side is up and which side is down. I think it's not quite, yeah, it goes that way. There we go. So that's the right way. I'm just going to put some markings, some arrows on there to suggest that it goes that way. Now, I wish I didn't do this. It wasn't exactly perfect, but it's even less perfect now that I trimmed it down, but that's fine. <laughs> now it shows through on the other side, but that's our, uh, it's fine. <laughs> You'll see, it won't really matter. So next I'm going to figure out what I want to do with those other circles that are on this sketch. 
And oftentimes circles are just representations of little embellishments. You don't have to use circles. Obviously with a sketch, you don't have to do anything that they do, but I'm going to be interpreting this sketch very literally. And my embellishments are going to be circles just the same way that Christine designed it. So I'm picking a couple of other pages and I specifically picked that blue paper that's over on the left hand side of your screen right now because it's going to pick up on that blue foam that is the whole kind of idea behind this layout is to have it on vellum and have the XO show from both sides. So I want to make sure that that blue XOXO looks at home. So I'm going to try to put some little bits of that blue color. I grabbed a whole bunch of punches here. I wasn't sure how they were going to look, so I'm just cutting some of them out of white paper just to avoid cutting into my patterned paper until I'm sure I know what I want to do with it. And those are just little four by six cards that I get from Amazon. They're super, super cheap, just paper. So I'm going with this size and I, I can't tell you exactly what size punches I'm using here, but as you can see, I'm just kind of trial and erroring it and you probably don't have exactly the same punches that I have anyways so I'll just encourage you to use your stash of punches and if you don't have punches that are the right sizes and shapes then maybe you have those nested circles that I have that are up there in the top right hand corner. Now those are called additional circles and they're from Waffle Flower. Apparently I'm guessing that they sell two sets of them, circles and additional circles, and I just have the additional circle set. I don't have both sets of them. So I cut uh, some of my circles as you saw with that and then my smaller ones because I just have an assortment of circle punches I'm just using my circle punches to do that because it's faster than pulling out my big shot which is still right behind me on the Razcog so it wouldn't be that un that inconvenient to use it but these are here so I might as well use them. I try to use my punches whenever I can. I'm using that same Sarasa clip brown pen to outline around the outside edges of all of these circles. And I was thinking I might be able to use some of those enamel dots and then I'll just match it with a with the a same sized enamel dot on the other side as well. But it turns out I'm not going to use those enamel dots. Those are supposedly enamel dots. They're called enamel dots and listed as such on websites, but they're actually epoxy stickers. I would not have bought epo epoxy stickers. I don't care for epoxy stickers, but they were listed as enamel dots, so I just assumed they were little enamel dots and shapes, but they're not. So I'll use a couple of them on the layout, uh, on the second layout, like on the other side of this one, but I probably won't use them again after that. So as you can see, I'm just outlining these little tiny circles that I'm punching. And I'm following the sketch almost exactly. I don't think I veered off at all other than the title isn't where the title is on the sketch. That's where my XOXO is going to go. So here's that background paper. And I'm just playing around with how everything is going to fit and look on the vellum. I think that's really pretty. And the vellum adds this beautiful softness. And it's going to be really interesting in my album because you'll be able to see through to the page that's behind it. And I do have some photos towards the end that even shows that. Uh, it's not where it's going to be in my album, but it just kind of shows you how it would look in an album. So stay tuned to the end to see those photos. As you can see, I'm basically placing these exactly where the sketch told me to place them. Here I am looking at these disappointingly and <laughs> regretting my choices. I don't even like that. So let's take that off. We'll put those aside until the second page. So this 
paper is nice because it has these uh, little strips and so you can get a little piece of any of the colors that are in this collection. I love it when they do this with uh, color swatches and collections because it makes a nice pattern on its own but it's also a really nice way to get a sampling for punches or die cuts or anything. And so instead of using enamel dots, I'm just using my hole punch. This is the hole punch from We Are Memory Keepers that punches the exact same size as a page protector hole. And so it's the white We Are Memory Keepers handheld punch. <clears throat> and so that gives me a nice little assortment. I'm going to grab another one. This one will be pink. And with these tiny little ones, I am outlining them as well, just so that they coordinate with the ones that are already on the page, but I'm only outlining them once. And then I'm just putting a couple little extra stray lines to make it look wobbly. And now I'm ready to start the other side. Now, this is the process that will go in the second process video, but I thought I would show you how I'm deciding to lay out the XOXO, and then I'll cut out some of this and put it in the other video because I can't do both of them in one process video. It would be way too long. So I'll get you to watch the second video in this series. It'll be linked in an information card, but that's how this is going to look. And I'm thinking, hmm, do I like it saying XOOXOX -X, or do I want it to say XOXO -X on this side? And what I decided was on this second side, I could actually make it continue into the circle. And therefore, it looks okay starting with an O, even though XOXO -X usually starts with an X. Because I'm going to have, I'm going to have it continue even onto the photo. So there will be that extra O that you don't see on the other side. And there will also be an extra X. So I think that that will look okay. So now I have edited out the process of making the whole second page. So check out that video, which is linked in the card above. But I've come back to this layout now that the other page is done. And I'm just adding the in the journaling here, which says, after being rescheduled twice due to COVID-19, Sarah and Tim's wedding was well worth the wait. Set in two beautiful vineyards, the locations were stunning. And this is the journaling that's really going to serve for both of these pages. And I'm just underlining here, just to give my my journaling a sense of being anchored to the page. And now I am going to, especially relative to how decorated the other pages, I'm deciding that I'm going to add some more embellishing here. At first I was thinking maybe this one will be very plain and simple, but I'm going to add a little bit of design elements to this just to decorate it a little bit. <clears throat> so you don't kind of turn the page and be overwhelmed with all of the, all of the decorating on the other page. So I'm just having a look here at what die cuts I have. These are the die cuts from the Gingham Garden collection. And I'd love to use these butterflies, but they're not, I wish that I only have one in pink and one in green and both of the places I want to put them have green. So I'd like, I wish I had one in pink and one in blue or yellow or orange or something, but I'll, I'll have to put the green one on a green background. <clears throat> So the butterflies work well because so much of this wedding was outdoors and uh, this smaller butterfly. Again, I don't want to really cover too much of the photographer's photo. And so I've decided to go with putting the green butterfly down here, even though it, there's a lot of green down here already. I'm just going to add a little bit of pink to, um, I thought about maybe putting an enamel dot or something. So I put this enamel this pink enamel heart, which at least breaks up some of the green there a little bit. It's still a lot of green, but it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'll take this pink butterfly and I'll put it up here. It just adds a bit more color over on this corner here. And I wish I had a big heart to put in the center of that butterfly, but all I have is a small one. So I'm just going to put a small green heart there. And these are the faux enamel dots. From this collection and at some point um, as you, oh, you got a little sneak peek of the other side there and you can see some of the die cuts from the other side are kind of 
you, you can see the back side of them, but I think that that's okay. It looks kind of pretty. I don't, I don't mind it like that. I do go through and X out any of the die cuts that I use if I think of it, just so that I'm not searching for something that isn't there in a future layout when I go to use those products. So that's how that one looks. And here's a little sneak peek of this one. Before I show you the photos, which are really interesting at the end, I just wanna have a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. These folks help make this channel happen. So big thanks to them. Patrons get early ad-free access to all of my process videos and real-time unedited versions of my videos, as well as monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos of my room and my process. And uh, thank you to all of my process videos do go live and public at YouTube. So you don't have to be a patron to see my work. Now you get to see how this one looks with another layout behind it. So this is how it would look in my album. This is not the layout that will be behind it, but I really like how you can see the designs peeking through from the page behind it. And if you want to see the page directly behind it, the other side of this layout, make sure that you check out the next video, which is linked in the in a card, and it should be the next video on my channel anyhow. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you have a really great day. Check out any of these other videos that you might be interested in, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Have a great scrappy week.